Today, I want to take a closer look at five semiconductor stocks that can really benefit from AI. More importantly, none of them are called NVIDIA. And I do want to say they're probably sitting at pretty interesting price points. So let's just get to it. All right, so the first company I want to take a closer look at is obviously not NVIDIA, but many people compare it to it. I do want to say analysts in my beliefs are underestimating this company and their overall products for the upcoming years. Um, that is AMD, ticker AAMD, obviously. Um, this is my number two position in my portfolio, so I'm very bullish on NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, one of the biggest things is AMD is expected to have a nice amount of products in the second half of the year. Um, we have the MI300, which is the one that's mainly the most anticipated. And I do believe this is going to do some well, uh, it's going to do well for their data center uh, GPU products. But also the MI300 is coming in a CPU, GPU flavor. And I do believe things like that are going to add to their overall solution. So I'm pretty excited about AMD and their MI300 products. But more importantly about AMD, is, right obviously we, we are in this ai craze but one thing really affecting amd is the slowdown in inventory correction is affecting their overall pc market their consumer market kind of the best small business market and the gaming market and it's causing for example here in the client revenue operating loss and this operating loss is really affecting the company's bottom line number and this is a market that I personally believe is going to pick back up, maybe not next quarter, maybe not two quarters from now, but in the next few quarters is going to pick back up. It's going to be profitable and it's going to make this company look like a really good in forms of financial metrics. Same with the gaming industry. Outside of that, the embedded market, in my opinion, is still one with high gross margins. They recently announced some new products in this space as well. So overall, I'm super excited about all the segments for AMD, the data center, obviously with AI, very similar with the embedded and the consumer market eventually picking back up who knows when but within the upcoming quarters the client and the gaming can probably go back to gaining more profits or becoming profitable to the client extent here like i mentioned amd's revenue estimates is expected to grow next fiscal year and the year after that I do believe analysts might be underestimating a bit of their growth i believe amd can grow a little bit faster so for that, I want to put AMD on the list for number one. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Now, company number two would be Monolithic Power System, ticker MPWR. This is a company I personally don't own yet, but it's one that I keep looking at and keep kind of saying, hey, Jose, this is one that's very, very high on your watch list. Year to date, the stock is up 55%, market cap of roughly 25, but Monolithic Power um, has a lot of growth opportunities. So let me show you some of them. And obviously it has to do with AI, but monolithic power, this is a company that has thousands and thousands of analog chips and, and all types of chips that are used mainly for power solutions. And if we take a closer look here, they mentioned they have over 4,000 products hitting all types of market from AC to DC power conversion, DC to DC power conversion. And these are their main industries. They mentioned that their main servo addressable market are the ones I enjoy are automotive. Uh, obviously, you guys know I'm, I'm, big, I'm really big in the automotive semiconductor space, motion control, things like robotics, right, and cloud computing. And those three markets alone make up over $15 billion of this company's servable addressable market. And their total markets uh, is expected to be $21 billion. So those three markets that I believe have huge growth opportunities make up over half of this company's total servable, servable, servable addressable market. They kind of mentioned that, hey, in the in the computing market, they have over four billion in things like the power rack and data centers. For example, their products go into CPU servers, into GPU AI servers, into the racks, and into huge data centers. Here, they mentioned that in the server board, in the CPU server alone, there's roughly eighty dollars of their content per server. Obviously, they also see huge growth in the GPU servers as well. Outside of that, in the direct data center, they also have various power solutions solutions to help with the powering of these huge data center racks. If we take a closer look at the automotive, the automotive market, the, it grew roughly 3x in the past 
since 2020 to 2022, huge compounded annual growth rate, right? They're seeing very diversified in America, 17%, Europe, Middle East, 20%, China, 30%, Korea, 20%, and the rest of Asia, 13%. They even talk about how certain certain chips they have certain chips that are exclusive for their products like they have some form of monopoly only single vendor there are these chips that are usually forty dollars per car this one's roughly eight dollars per car this one's eight dollars per car and there's thousands and thousands of cars being added so obviously this adds up they kind of talk a little bit about kind of all the different markets that they're seeing and they said that new products allow mps to address up to $400 per car additional socket. So there's a huge market from electrification, autonomous driving, digital cockpit to lightning body. So I'm really excited about MPW, um, MPWR, a, a ticker or monolithic power. I do believe this is one that might be trading at a higher valuation, but it has a lot of growth opportunities. Here we can see how um, the analysts expect this company to grow next year and the year after that. So this is going to be number two. And obviously we saw the AI server are another important portion of this company's total revenue and things like autonomous driving as well. So I do believe this company can benefit from this AI trend at the moment. Now, company number three will be Qualcomm, ticker QCOM. Qualcomm is definitely known as a company for their mobile devices, but they are releasing a lot of solutions for the AI space. Right now, the market cap of roughly $130 billion, dividend yield of roughly 2.7%. Like I mentioned, right now, they're mainly known as a handset product company, but they are growing and diversifying their exposure into automotive, into Internet of Things. And if you have been watching some of my episodes, one of the things that I'm really excited about Qualcomm is what they call the future of AI hybrid. And they believe that right now AI is only happening in the cloud, right? If you want to do an AI workload, you're sending it over to the cloud to kind of get a response and everything. Qualcomm believes that's not going to be a stable, uh, it's not going to be sustainable for businesses. Uh, for the future of AI, they want to bring some of that workload to local devices, and Qualcomm believes they are the prime company to do that. For example, they already mentioned that over 2 billion of their products have AI products shipped to date, which makes them one of the leader in local AI devices. The, mention, the, the reason they have this is, for example, the chips that go into the mobile phones like the Snapdragon come with a special processor. This special processor is called the Hexagon processor we can see here, and this is Qualcomm's AI engine. So now because this AI engine is in the mobile devices and other solutions, if you need to kind of do some form of AI workload, you don't have to kind of bury the CPU or the GPU into creating these solutions. You're not going to throw thousands and thousands of tasks to the CPU or the GPU. You're going to throw those tasks to this AI engine to overall help with the efficiency. This is also kind of entering into the into the PC market. Qualcomm recently announced the Snapdragon platform for computers and tablets. It's already being used in one of the... Um, I know one of the Windows Surface, I believe the Windows Surface 9, is using the Qualcomm Snapdragon chip for computation. So we're seeing it there. Obviously, Qualcomm is, is working in autonomous driving and assistant driving as well. So we can see how AI is pretty strong there. Outside of that, AI, Qualcomm also has what they call the Cloud AI 100, and it's this chip that is meant for infer inference needs. Uh, it, and it did some really great results in forms of price to performance, so they also have that. It's not a crazy product for them, but we can see how Qualcomm is definitely in different phases here in the AI market. Outside of hardware, Qualcomm has also created this AI software full stack, which is helping the company be, like I mentioned, a leader in this space. Now we take a closer look at company number four, and this is Kulikin and Sofa, uh, ticker KLIC. Currently a market cap of $3 billion, PE ratio 15.6, dividend yield of 1.3. Right now, the semiconductor market is seeing a huge growth as manufacturing plants are being built all over the world. Unfortunately, at the moment, we might be seeing a little bit of a slowdown in equipment equipment purchase, but Kulik and Sofa, they do mention that, hey, their products can see huge growth opportunities, especially from things like uh, like advanced packaging and other solutions needed as we continue to grow the semiconductor market. Here, if we take a closer look at their most recent revenue, we can see that general semiconductor market is a big portion of this company's total revenue. So it's the auto and industrial, like I mentioned, those are big plays that I believe is important for the semiconductor space and growth opportunities. Then they have the Auto APS, which is another big portion. Um, those are the three main markets 
general semis auto industrial and aps which includes automotive advanced packaging and power semi improvements and that's roughly a, a big portion of this company's total revenue and where a huge growth opportunity is so kulik and sofa i mean this is a company that again it might not have a monopoly to some extent on their semiconductor equipment but we are seeing this huge advancement in semiconductor manufacturing manufacturing fabs being built all around the world so kulik and sofa can definitely benefit now the final company is Bessie, ticker BESI or BE Semiconductor. This is a European company, so it is traded over the counter. It definitely uh, market cap of roughly $8.1 billion. So it is a nice company, not that huge, not that small either. What I'm really excited about Bessie is right now to create all these AI semiconductor products, you need to have advanced packaging. And these advanced packaging go in things like flip chip, uh, thermal compression, hybrid bonding. And that's pretty much what Bessie provides, right? Die attaches roughly 79% of this company's total revenue. Packaging and plating is a 21% of this company's total revenue. So right now we are seeing where the, if we take a closer look at the next slide, hybrid bonding is not a question of if, but when and how large the opportunity. AMD and TSMC achieve full commercial productions for initial devices and thermal compression bonding, chip to wafer also becoming more important factor in customer roadmaps. If you have been following my channel, you have heard of things like Nvidia looking for more chip to wafers, um, advanced packaging to some extent, and obviously Bessie provides some of the solutions. Here we can see how chiplet and hybrid bonding is growing. AMD is doing their 3D packaging, hyper bonding on a lot of their semiconductor products. If we take a closer look at this presentation, I, I, I think they showcase so much great information that investors should take a closer look. Um, but first, long-term investments, Bessie did a great job of kind of talking about all the great, all the fab plants that are expected to be built within the upcoming years for and when they were announced for example tsmc has numerous plants expected to be built within the next five to four years in arizona and in taiwan we can see micron is also building numerous plants intel global foundries texas instruments samsung and these are just once announced in 2022 and 2023 uh, so overall there is a huge growth opportunity for the semiconductor market more importantly advanced packaging like i meant more things like multi-chip packaging and chiplet transition is needed for a lot of these advanced semiconductor solutions. They do mention one of the prime examples is here. Right now, there is the chiplet architecture. One of these examples is Intel's Ponte Vecchio, which has 47 active chiplets in one packaging. And all of this is being made by hybrid bounding and chip to wafer thermocouple thermal compression bonding. Uh, chiplet adoption is also increasing rapidly. We here, we can see a Marvel data center switch, which is using 17 chiplets. We can see Amazon data center CPU doing that needs seven chips and all these need what, like I mentioned, hybrid bonding and thermal compression bonding. And if we take a closer look uh, uh, back at their semi, uh, at their previous presentation, we can see here that thermal compression and hyper bonding are two semiconductor equipment products that they have uh, so overall i do believe this could be a big player in this space here they even did a great presentation for example the new 3d chiplet architecture that we are he hearing about this include things like hybrid bonding in hybrid bonding they have these solutions chip to wafer thermal compression bonding high bandwidth memory stacking they also have wafer level dive molding and numerous other products right so we can definitely see how this product can benefit. We even see actual solutions. For example, the Ryzen 7 900X3D that uses hybrid bonding. The MI300 uses hybrid bonding as well. Um, and we continue to see numerous other solutions in this space use a lot of these semiconductor equipment needs. Uh, so I do believe Bessie is a little bit more on the expensive side, but it's one that can definitely benefit. It has a nice dividend yield of roughly 2.8%, a market cap of roughly $8 billion. So these are the five semiconductor companies that I do believe are pretty interesting for the month of July and probably for the upcoming year. Obviously, I will release new episode on August where maybe these companies might have been might have run too much and we might have other semiconductor companies out there. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day and see you next time.